Hello, welcome to Metal Health Fan Edition number 11. Today I'm here with a buddy of mine, Hunter Collins, and uh, Hunter is a comedian with Yuck Yucks. But not only that, he does lots of voice actor work and stuff, and uh, he's an, an expert on a few things, uh, mostly horror movies and Jean-Claude Van Damme movies. Say hello, Hunter. Hey, everybody. That actually sums me up really well. I never thought of myself as a metal horror movie Van Damme guy who tells jokes once in a while, but that actually is my whole life force. Yeah, right? Like, not only that, but you got that uh, show you do with Andrew Barr, um, the, uh, what's it called again? It's called Guts for Laughs. It's Guts basically for mystery, laughs. it's basically Mystery Science Theater 3000, but we yell at a horror movie. Nice. Yeah, I, a lot I've of fun. I've never been, but I, I, I should have gone. I should have gone. Well, I, who knows if it'll, if it'll ever happen again. Yeah. Uh, stupid things and stuff and things, yeah. Yeah, goddamn infectious diseases. Yeah, yeah, friggin' stuff. And, yeah. You know, infectious diseases never stopped me from raw dogging. And that's all of a sudden, my whole life is halted because of one. Yeah, I I'm know, finally right? mad at disease. It never stopped Easy e either, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, but um, yeah, so let's talk about some metal. I know you like um, uh, Obituary, and uh, I do have some uh, White Zombie that you also requested after we went through a list of long, long list of things I didn't have. Yeah, yeah. White Zombie is crazy. Like, it's, uh, it's way different than Rob Zombie, you know? And um, it's true. there's never been anything like White Zombie. I can't think of like one band who's come close to what they did and i don't know how they pulled it off because it's i find it hard to describe like it's sort of it's almost more like hard rock it's in like a way a, it's, it's like an eerie hard rock which makes it more metal i think yeah and the fact that more human than human you've ever even got on a, on radio is yeah. uh astounding like the 90s was pretty cool for that yeah not only that but like i remember uh my brother made a mixtape with uh with a white zombie on it and it was playing in the car and my mom was driving and then uh like it wasn't the fact that it was like oh 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 it was the fact that my brother was looking at me making facial expressions <laughs> while it was going oh oh and then uh, my mom threw it at the window that's funny and really gross yeah i know right why would my brother be looking at me like that yeah, you should have the decency to scoot around behind, give you a reach around. No con, no uh, eye contact. No like eye contact. Classy... Maybe just a Dutch rudder, so he's not actually touching me because that's gross. <laughs> yeah, but I and I still to this day don't know what the fuck Rob Zombie's ever talking about. He's, I am an astro creep, but a skeleton chicken and a <laughs> hell of a beef. What is he talking about? It doesn't matter to me, though. It's really no, cool. it doesn't. It's just like any most metal. Like, it doesn't matter what they're actually saying. It just sounds cool. Yeah, yeah. And I love how the... And I love you got the obituary uh, record on the wall there, too. Yeah. Uh, I like to put up the records, uh, have them different for every interview, and uh, let the let the interviewee decide what goes up there, you know? That way you're a part yeah. of it, too. Obituary is so uh, classic live. It's just a traditional metal show, but I love how the guy performs in like tan cargo shorts and shit. He doesn't give a fuck about being super metal. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. He's he's himself, which is the most metal thing you can do. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I I agree one hundred percent. You know, it was like uh, when Chuck used to do those interviews wearing the cat shirts and stuff like that. Uh, Chuck from Death. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I was just like, it was like he's supposed to be the biggest death metal band, and then he's wearing a shirt with a cat on it. That's great. Yeah. And you got the Megadeth poster. Yeah, yeah. It's a black I, poster. Oh, it's, cool. It's a, a, a vintage, like 1990, 91. Yeah. 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 It's not of, perfect, uh, but uh, it looks good when I'm in front of it. Is And is it, a, is it a picture of a skeleton coming out of Ruth Bader Ginsburg's vagina? Y yeah, yeah. Something toxic like that. <laughs> Um, I, well, I that's why, that's why anyone who has to get near there has to dress up in jumpsuits like that, you know? <laughs> I met uh, Dave Mustaine. I don't know if I ever told you that. You met him? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I got to tell this story. My, uh, my buddy's mom. This is why you got to tell the story. Nice. <laughs> my buddy's mom was the head honcho at French Much Music. Oh, music wow. Plus, where I, I grew up in Montreal. 
So whenever artists came through, we could meet whoever we wanted, basically. She'd just bring us in. So like I met a bunch of wrestlers like The Rock and Val Venus and oh, Jeff wow. Jarrett, Mark Henry. And um, Mark Henry had this bodyguard with him. Apparently he had this like just this giant dude with sunglasses and he looked like a wrestler. He was jacked. And I was like, are you a wrestler? And he goes, no, nah, no, nah, I'm just I'm just Mark's bodyguard. And then like later that year, the movie The Green Mile came out and I realized that's fucking Michael Clark Duncan was <laughs> pretending he was like, wasn't a star yet. Oh, wow. Um, so that was crazy. But then Megadeth rolls through. They were doing this acoustic tour uh, on the, the fucking World Needs a Hero album. I that love right that album. After... when they got back to like metal after like cryptic writings and stuff, you know? Yeah, and and the Nick Mensa was out. They had the guy from Suicidal Tendencies and Al Petrelli from Alice Cooper took over for Marty Friedman. Yeah, and um, so <laughs> I'm wearing like probably this fucking Penguins jersey, and I've got like a Billabong yellow and black visor on. You know, yeah. short short hair. It was like the year 2000. I'm 17. And uh, Dave Mustaine's talking about how he stayed true to metal during this interview. And there's like a hundred people in the, in the studio. And he said, uh, Dave's all like, yeah, I stayed true to, to metal. You know, I didn't cut my hair and uh, look like one of these posers and like points right at me. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck, dude? I'm like a huge Megadeth fan. Why would you do that to me? Mm. And people were heckling him and he had this guitar that he would flip over. And on the other side, there was just a sticker that said, don't be a dick. And everyone thought that was the coolest thing. Like the hecklers, hecklers got totally owned. But then he, my buddy's mom takes us up to meet Dave Mustaine. And there I am, the kid he called a piece of shit for having a fucking pompadour haircut. Yeah. And um, so we, uh, we get our pictures with, uh, with him. And Dave Mustaine puts his hand around my neck, but he squeezes the back of my neck like he fucking hates me. Like it, like it hurt. Like he was trying to rip my trachea out through the back of my neck. And you can see me in the picture. I'm like, eee. it's not like a, <laughs> <laughs> it's not like a happy smile. Uh, you so, should have waited one yeah. more year till you're 18, and then you could almost legally done it. You know, <laughs> right? I should have sued his ass. That was right before his hand turned to shit too. So Maybe your neck probably broke his hand. I think so. My tough ass Ukrainian neck. Yeah, right. Him in. <laughs> but yeah, that's my my Dave Mustaine story. Oh, that's awesome. That's better than mine. Uh, mine was I waited outside uh, with this poster to try to get it signed, and then I gave up and went home. <laughs> I know that's got a solid beginning, middle, and end, man. I know, right? Uh, I've seen them like <laughs> six, seven times. Like it was totally awesome. But, uh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I've, all, yeah, I've seen Megadeth once live in Australia. Oh, I saw wow. Megadeth and Slayer. Yeah. In straight up like a hangar. They played oh, a cool. fucking hanger, and it was the hanger eighteen. They, it must have been eighteen. Hanger eighteen. <laughs> My Australian accent. It's not too good. Sounds more like Dave Mustaine. <laughs> well, same guy. Same guy. Yeah, but I think they. I think a bunch of people had bootleg tickets because there were too many people in there. All right. And I've never been in a mosh pit where the whole place was the mosh pit, like. But you couldn't even move you had you had literally zero personal space so the whole time 360 degrees you were touching other men and let's be clear it was all men yeah and i've never seen carnage like that after a concert too because there were so many clothes and shoes just littered about this whole place it looked like fucking sarajevo and uh I took a picture of this one poor bastard. He somehow lost his shorts too. And, and he was down to uh, one shoe with a sock, other foot barefoot, and like these fucking dirty ass white undies. The dude was just ruined. But uh, yeah, Slayer I've seen three or four times. They, were, huh. they're, they always put on a classic show too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've seen Slayer a couple times. Uh, I believe it was 04 at Ozfest in um, Massachusetts, and uh, mm. on the Unholy Alliance tour, it's 06, I think it was. Yeah. Cool. Who was on the Unholy Alliance tour? Oh, that was a good one. I was um like uh, Buddy's nephew or whatever with uh, Fine Eyes Bleed. Um, 
the, the I don't think they exist anymore. Uh, Children of Bodom, Mastodon, and Lamb of God. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thine eyes bleed. That's like Thine. old English. Yeah, like an old yeah. English. Thine eyes bleed there, eh? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> The old timey Nova Scotian metal band. Ah, thine eyes are bleeding there, boy. Oh yeah, yeah. You gotta put some band aids on your eye, dear Lord, thunder and Jesus. How else are you gonna catch the blood there? <laughs> yeah. I saw Slayer open for Marilyn Manson. We were talking about it briefly before we started recording. Yeah. And then I said stop because we got to do it during the interview. Yeah, I think that was like '07, big outdoor show, and we went like a bunch of buddies and we did shrooms. And the mosh pit was on a hill. It was at the uh, Molson Amphitheater. I think it's Budweiser Garden. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'd never done a diagonal mosh pit. And I, I bitched out on this thing so fast because it was like I got punched in the face and then fell <laughs> like down a hill, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yep. Yeah. No, not on shrooms. Too much peace and love in this heart today. Yeah, yeah. So we we watched from the sidelines, but that thing was instant. Like, imagine just tilting a mosh pit <laughs> just like, like like that. It doesn't make sense. And uh, so then Manson goes up, and this was like, what I don't know. He was doing the dope show and all that stuff, and we just fucking like gave it for Slayer. And Marilyn Manson comes out, and he's like. Just singing these operas in front of a fake Nazi flag or whatever is con shocking stage show is supposed to be. Yeah, and everyone was on drugs, and you could tell people were looking at looking around, kind of like uh, Garth Algar in Wayne's World when he's like <laughs> trying to have a good time but not. And everyone was looking at each other like, "Does this suck?" Was just what was understood uh non-verbally and people started leaving and shit no one gave a fuck and i was like you can't follow slayer like that's why yeah. I, I, when I saw not the right kind yeah. of metal yeah so like even when i saw like megadeth and slayer like megadeth is arguably the more commercially successful band but they knew slayer's the one that goes fucking last yeah yeah with the uh with the pits and everything it's it's hard to um to beat a slayer pit that's for sure yeah um, when I saw it, the first time I saw him, it was like Slayer, then Judas Priest, and then uh, Black Sabbath with Ozzy, right? So oh, yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's, that's a, a little different, different story. story, you know? Like, uh, okay, like uh, Judas Priest, you got Rob Halford being all awesome and everything, coming out on a motorcycle, and then uh, the creators of metal themselves, you know, Black yeah. Sabbath with Ozzy. So. I guess there's a lot of reverence there. Maybe reverence supersedes hardness, you know? Yeah, like but legendariness, yeah. Yeah. Still, like Judas Priest is like party metal. Yeah, and you know, they made a lot of groovy. shitty albums too. You know, <laughs> yeah. I'll bet some people left after Slayer. Yeah, yeah. Oh, probably. Uh, like honestly, when and for that show, uh, that was my first like big, big, big show, and uh, I sat down during most of Judas Priest because I was saving up for Sabbath. Right. So good call. Yeah. A triple bill is hard to make it through, man. Like. It wasn't a triple bill. It was Oz 04. So, like, all day. It was all nothing oh, but awesome God. bands all day. Like, That's Slipknot, awesome. Lamb of God, Hate <laughs> Breed, The Bleeding Through, Devil Driver, God forbid. I could keep on going, but I'm not. Yeah. yeah. I saw, yeah, Overkill open for Hate Breed. And uh, I, I was like, I don't know if Hate Breed can fucking do it. but And I was like, Hate Breed's a little cheesy now. But they got on stage and, like, Jasta just fucking gives it. Yeah. And uh, that music just... I don't know. It just pumps me up. I don't give a fuck how cheesy people think it is. Yeah. They they're headliners. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, maybe not on Ozfest, but like yeah, sells yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited for the new album next month. Yeah, um, I, I haven't been following Hate Breed in a long time. <laughs> it's just a man screaming at you to believe in yourself. Yeah, it's yeah. like <laughs> it's like if Tony Robbins did more creatine, <laughs> it would be it would he would become Jamie Jasta. Yeah. Oh, wow. All right. So I've got some uh, questions for you about um, uh, you are an expert in things and I'm going to, I'm going to get the expert opinion. All right. What is, <laughs> okay, the most, sure. what is the most metal horror movie? The most, me there's a real fucking metal horror movie, French movie called Martyrs. And I remember like, 
having smoked too much weed and seeing it and having to take a walk. Um, it's sort of like a movie that keeps you guessing what's real and what isn't. And it starts off where like, that sounds this, like my schizophrenia with my, yeah, honestly, it made, that's, that's what I picture schizophrenia was like, was watching this movie on weed. Oh, wow. And, uh, there's, it starts out, there's like a creepy lady in a house and then the creepy lady turns out to be real. And then the creepy lady skins herself and then another lady skins her. And then it, so there's like these skinned ladies all over the place. And in the end, it's, they're, it's scientists are just trying to look into people experiencing the worst pain possible's eyes to see if they can see God in their eyes, which is pretty metal. That's not, yeah, yeah, that's metal. Yeah. Um, other than that, Hellraiser is pretty fucking metal. Again, skinned people. All right. And speaking Love. of Hellraiser, you did a parody of Hellraiser called uh, Hellraiser, the Hellabad Razor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Hellabad Razor. It was a lot yeah. of fun. Because I, I, during the pandemic, I watched all 10 Hellraiser movies. That's, that's like horror. That's like torture right there, watching all 10. <laughs> yeah, but I was like, even though they they got so shit so fast, yeah. especially those middle ones, something about having to complete the set is almost like a like OCD that's a about it? yeah that's almost my OCD is just having to finish Hellraiser series, and uh, so yeah I watched them all and I was like by the end I was deep diving into Hellraiser Wikipedia and stuff and it turns out like some of these movies were written as a non Hellraiser movie. Yeah. Yeah. They was just like changed and called Hellraiser hopefully hoping that it picks up some fans. Yeah. And you just throw pinhead in for like two minutes at the end. Yeah. And, and uh, so, and you could tell a lot of these movies were that. Um, and so basically, and those shoehorned in scenes that uh, pinheads dialogue is so contrived and shitty. He just comes out and, basically does a snarky tweet out loud. <laughs> <laughs> like my favorite line of the entire series is he goes, welcome to the worst nightmare of all reality. And we're supposed to be like, Oh shit, yo pinhead dropping the truth. And uh, so I uh, developed a sketch uh, with the idea that pinhead is winging it. And actually doesn't know what he's going to say when he comes from hell to drag people back there with him. Yeah. Um, anyone watching this, go check out Hunter's YouTube. Uh, lots of cool stuff on there. You can learn all about Dave's Come and uh, the Hellraiser parody and see some really good stand-up. <laughs> like, seriously. Uh, man, <laughs> Thanks, awesome. man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And also, um, what is the most metal Jean-Claude Van Damme movie? It's a very good question. And honestly, there's there's a few answers and I might sort of go through it out loud with you if that's Just okay. do it. I'm, I'm a big fan up until like I stopped watching what was the desert one? Desert Heat. Yeah, Desert Heat, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that one is insane and not very metal. Yeah. Um, so in terms of metal Van Damme movies, um, not Time Cop. No. I was thinking maybe Time Cop, but it's a, that's more like it's almost a synthwave movie. Um, then I was thinking maybe Universal Soldier is pretty yeah. metal. Yeah, just the the title sounds like it could be an Overkill album. Yeah, I, and, I agree um, with that. And they've got those little like cyber eyeball tracker things that they wear, and that's kind of like a you know Megadeth Psychotron vibe yeah. going on. Um, but Bloodsport might actually be the most metal in that there's a lot of blood. Um, there's even a compound fracture when that one guy gets his leg, his uh, yeah, shin yeah. busted out. The uh, stuff um, in the face, you know, trying to blind you and you still kick ass. Yeah. Yeah. Um, being tied to the trees and being so strong with, with the splits that you break two fucking trees down. That's metal as hell. Yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, Chong Lee's metal. Yeah, uh, just like I mean, they've even there's even those memes out there of Chong Lee doing <laughs> yeah. that, and they've just add in like a drum kit, and it looks <laughs> like he's fucking doing blast beats. <laughs> um, so at the end of it, yeah, and and Van Damme has a nude butt shot, and he's got buns of steel, aka metal. So I'm gonna say Bloodsport's <laughs> the most metal Van Damme movie. 
<laughs> well, yeah, oh, I, uh, I agree with that. Uh, yeah, I'd say. Uh, still, I'd say my favorite one is, uh, I told you this, it's uh, Lionheart. Yeah, oh, the, man. The first time they let him show a little bit of emotion, he's got to fight because his brother died in a drug deal gone wrong. And he's gonna fight for uh, to get money for his niece and his and his sister in law, you know. Right, right. Fighting for the niece is so funny. Yeah. That opening scene, my brother and my sister, we used to uh, watch it a lot, and it's it's supposed to be Van Damme's brother, right? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so they even got a guy who's got a bit of a Van Damme accent. Yeah. To play him, so he's doing like the coke deal gone bad, and sugar. his brother like, yeah, is he sugar? And so whenever we'd be in a restaurant and, you know, someone like our mom would put like sugar in her coffee or something, we would grab it, taste it and go, this is sugar. <laughs> As a throw, throwback to Lionheart, Man, that running gag always delivered. Oh, yeah, yeah, it does. Like that whole movie, like I still, I, I have tears sometimes when I watch it nowadays, <laughs> you know. Now that I can you, feel things again with being off yeah. drugs, I, I, I have a tear watching that movie. You, know? <laughs> you actually kind of look like the guy he fights in the almost empty pool. Oh, no, no, like he doesn't fight a fat guy in a pool. <laughs> just gonna have long hair i'm just like that guy i, I i'm like maybe if I, I i look more like attila uh at the end than, than oh true you know. that's true what else what else is going on uh, metal wise though what is it wait it, metal and mental health right yeah yeah uh say some fucked up things with mental health yeah we gotta do that too okay how do you how do you marry those two those two ideas like i, I don't know how i um fit in I don't know how mentally unwell I am. Uh, I don't know, but I am, and, and it's my show, so. <laughs> yeah, I love metal, and I'm schizophrenic, recovering drug addict, so uh, I, uh, I stole the name from uh, Quiet Riot in 83, even though I was born in 86, and uh, yeah, I was just trying to make history from here. Oh, Sweet. what do you think of my, uh, my uh, shot that I got for that's going into the intro for this? Uh, yeah. Really good. Did you hurt yourself when you fell? Uh, like the worst thing I have to show you from that would be like just that. It's not not that oh, bad. I thought because you had the straight jacket on, you could have dislocated a shoulder or broken a rib. That was or, a heavy or fall. Or just how my head bounced off the sidewalk. <laughs> Jesus, Robbie. You never know. Like you know how like in movies sometimes people get banged on the head and all of a sudden they become like geniuses. Yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe that happened to you, man. Well, um, what actually what I'm thinking about doing is, um, so I'm going to queue up the, um, the, uh, that scene with the part in the song where uh, the verse is like, um, I've got metal on my brain, I've got metal in my brain, so sit there and watch this and see why I'm insane. When I say insane, that's going to be me bouncing my head off the sidewalk. We're going to cut the music and then just do an inner monologue thing where I'm like, oh, that hurt. Oh, but I think it, uh, I think it might have healed my schizophrenia, frenia. Nice. <laughs> and then when I get frenia, up, frenia, frenia. Yeah, and then when I get up, uh, the music hits, starts back up, and then it goes to all the other scenes. Awesome. Okay, uh, well, I back that up, man. Yeah, it's going to be, honestly, the song is going to be amazing. Uh, it's just waiting to come back from production right now. And uh, I've got all the shots filmed, and uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited about this. Maybe I'll put uh, just that scene that we're talking about uh, at the end of this interview, just so people can get a little grasp on what we're talking about. Right. But, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm really excited about the intro. I think it's going to make uh, mental health top notch. Good. Congrats, man. Yeah. Was it ever strange for you, like, like when you were, you were having schizophrenic episodes and listening to metal, did that like exacerbate the condition or? Honestly, no. Um, I didn't like, uh, that was around the time like, I, um, okay. Like it was eight years ago, uh, pretty much right now that I was going through psychosis when I was going to Humber colleges, uh, comedy writing performance. Uh, I didn't finish, but as you know, I'm still allowed to do the Tuesdays at Yuck. So that's pretty sweet. Yeah. That's the best thing you get out of that program anyways. So, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But, um, so I went through psychosis and, uh, this is going to be a long story. We'll just make this interview longer, but you're trying, you're being the interviewer now instead of the interview. Yeah, man. I flipped, I've turned the tables. Turn the tables. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. So, uh, I was in psychosis and, um, um, I was having false memories that, uh, I, uh, stabbed, uh, a, a gang member and that the gang i was having memories of people telling me all these things i had to do to make it so this gang wouldn't hurt my niece 
and um, yeah, I, uh, like Lionheart. Kind of, yeah, like that's yeah, yeah, yeah. I like how you're uh, tying those two together. That's why I cry when I watch it now, right? So, uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, so basically, I took a knife to my roommate, but I couldn't do it because he's a good friend, like like really good friend, and um, yeah, I haven't seen him in person since, but we talk every now on uh, Facebook, and uh, yeah, um, and then I spent okay. Uh, a little advice for people dealing with cops right now. Um, the best way to approach the cops when they have their guns drawn at you is half naked. Like if they see the only weapon on you is your penis, then you know you're not hiding anything too dangerous. I like that you're looking right at camera when you said that too, because it well, looks like you're the staring. Too. It's not just you. Yeah, but it looked like you were staring into my soul. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Show cops your dick. Yeah, show cops your dick. Usually you got to spin an Aussie album backwards to hear that. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So uh, then I spent a week at uh, St. Joseph's and St. Joseph's in the waiting room. There was this guy who said he had these crypt tattoos. And I was like, okay. Uh, Then I was getting memories that I was supposed to hurt someone in the living room, in the living room, the waiting room. And uh, I picked the guy with crypt tattoos because, you know, it was a gang thing, right? So, uh, um, I'm not a fighter or anything. The most I've got is like a belly to belly suplex. <laughs> <laughs> so I did that. And then I bashed his head into the ground a couple times and, uh, there was blood. And then the security uh, people came, got me, put me in a straight jacket and, uh, put a needle in my ass. And I woke up two days later. Robbie, I think those were just anthrax lyrics. I don't think that was a story of yours. Uh, you just told well, I have the memories, and my parents came to visit me when I was <laughs> out from getting the needle in the ass. I don't, I didn't wake up because I was out from the drugs, and uh, yeah, I spent a week down in the basement of St. Joseph's, which is uh, where they keep the violent uh, mentally ill. Mm. And uh, so I spent a week there. Uh, they let me out, knowing that my meds take a week, a month to kick in, and after a week, and then uh, called my dad. He came pick me up, and then I jumped in front of a truck uh, like a week later. Right, which is very metal. Yeah, that's, that's metal. Like, the truck was metal, and then I did damage to the truck, which is metal, which makes me metal. And, uh, yeah. The only thing not metal about that is the Harry Potter scar. Woo! I don't know. I think that's metal. It's a oh, so is it, like, scar. It's, it was, it'd be cooler if it was, like, a, a cooler scar that didn't represent Harry Potter, is what I'm saying. Right, like, if it somehow scarred you in, like, an anarchy symbol or something. That would have been cool. That would have been cool. Been proper, <laughs> yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but were you listening to heavy metal while you're having these episodes? Uh, I've, I've always listened to heavy metal. So like, okay. So do you think, do you think it, uh, affected your behavior? Uh, I don't, I don't think so. It's not like I was listening to cannibal corpse or anything. Right. Right. Honestly, I still can't really make out what cannibal corpse is saying. Uh, either do I, but I have one question for all my viewers. Um, do you think, uh, Campbell Corpse gives a pearl necklace or a ruby necklace? The song I Come Blood? Right, right. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. I, th- I, I, when I was backstage for a Hate Breed Campbell Corpse show. Yeah. My buddy was the drummer for Hate Eternal, who was opening for, for all of them. So he, he got me in there and um, – Fuck, Campbell Corpse is pretty funny. They're like, we got eight ladies out there tonight. And sure enough, you know, like 50 girls in the audience squeal. And he's like, all right, well, this song's for the ladies. It's called Fucked with a Knife. Yeah. <laughs> but I wound up talking to George backstage. And it was kind of like actually one of those Wayne's World scenes where they talked to Alice Cooper, where yeah. it was the least metal conversation ever. He was like, of his fat neck and she's all like yeah i gotta go back to tampa and go uh, see my daughter and i don't know the, the flights are just out outrageous nowadays and <laughs> i'm like you know you should check out expedia i got a really good deal on the flights and hotels using that site uh, not too long ago it's like expedia.com i'm like yeah man expedia.com He's like, all right i'm gonna check that out and that's my the least metal conversation I've ever had with a metal icon. Oh, wow. You think you just find someone that bought a ticket, uh, kill them, cook them, and eat them, you know? <laughs> right. A ticket, you know? Like, common sense here. Come on, you're, you're cannibal. <laughs> I, I met, like, uh, Matt, the drummer from Hatebreed, and Wayne Lozniak, 
the guitarist. He was like brand new at the time. And then I, I go to Chris Beatty and I'm like, Oh man, I'm such a fan. He's like, can I get a picture with you? And he was like, nah, man. Like, what <laughs> the fuck? Fuck. Oh, who are you? Get out of here. Be, yeah. be, a, be a fucking star guy. You know, so I'll talk shit. I'll talk shit on your fucking podcast. Chris Beatty is a fucking piece of shit. Take that, Chris. Yeah. Doesn't, yeah. doesn't uh, do, do it for huh? the fans. We'll get on stage and make fun of you about it because we're comedians. Yeah. yeah, man. I I bought all your albums, man. I paid for that stupid little sideways hat you're wearing. <laughs> yeah. Take that, Chris. <laughs> uh, is there anything you want to promote or plug before we get going here? Uh, yeah, sure. Find me on Twitter, Hunter underscore Collins, and I usually run everything through there. And- fuck, add me on Facebook. I don't give a fuck, man. Let's be friends. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, also, go to his YouTube page because it's hilarious. And the fact that it's only getting like 36 views for all Dave's come and everything, that's, <laughs> fucking, that's not right. It's not right. We hey, need easy, Dave's easy. come around. Some of my uh, videos are in the six figures there. The Dave's come is just taking a while to take off, man. Yeah, man, uh, uh, man, like Dave's come should be a lot further along than it is. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Oh, yeah. All right, well, thank you very much for being on Mental Health Fan Edition number 11. It was a pleasure. Thanks for having me, Robbie.